as what turns out to be a five-part series, mainly because I can't figure out. This is a newer camera that I use today. I used a Sony camera in 2014 to do the filming I did then that belonged to a friend of mine who generously allowed me to use her camera to, to get a few films done, which was the beginning of this home filming documentary bullshit. <laughs> Back to this subject. And this is the last part of this series, because I'm going to make it wrap it up. I use, to help me tune, this very difficult and uh, high maintenance is the way I like to describe this. She has a floating bridge. She has a very beautiful touch and tone to her. She's sexy, and on occasion, as the November 22nd filming indicates, she can play hot. And I'm using an old, I got that 10-foot cord that I use in 1993 when I purchased a Fender Super 60 amp in Gulfport, Mississippi, brand new. The salesman was a good one, and he, it has a massive Black Widow speaker in it. It's extremely heavy and awkward to carry around with you, the amplifier. It's a Fender Super 60. They don't make them, I don't think, anymore. They have the component system on the top of the board of the amp, which is an unusual location for that. But in spite of all of that, I think it's one of the finest amps Fender's ever produced. It is a winner. I bought it for $350, brand new. It is one of the finest investments I have ever made. I am proud, though I'm very poor, of that investment. This I got through the mail recently. It's an, an attempt to duplicate this. This is a Matrix Quartz Guitar Tuner SR1000. You can see it has a little hump over the, it's a quartz needle. And what you can do with this as you go through the different uh, standard tuning notes, which is what it gives you. It's not an expensive tuner, but it's a good one if you know how to use it. You can use harmonics on an instrument like this one. The queen requires more to brush her hair and to put makeup on her and to dress her than your average lady. Even an upper class lady, a queen is a queen. This was my original acquisition, which is a Matrix SR1000 from 1986. I bought this one in Shreveport, Louisiana. It lasted until 2017 without any maintenance issues at all. It served me incredibly well. I bought it brand new for $20. That's the one from 1986. It currently needs to see an electronics doctor because I'm too dumb and lazy to learn how to repair my own equipment. And I would like to know how to do that. In Shreveport, in the days of my Elmaya, when I only owned that guitar, I had a repairman who I found. I'm proud of this and arrogant about it. He was a former Air Force uh, man. He lived his house, his backyard, his fence to his backyard, literally backed up to Barksdale Air Force Base in Bossier City. <laughs> He worked at Barksdale for many years. He was the head of the electronics, maintenance, repair, etc. of B-52 bombers. The guy was a genius. On top of that, he was literally the nicest, one of the nicest human beings, considering how smart he was, that I've ever met. I could take my old Maya over to see him. This is, uh, sorry to change subject, this is the Again, the quartz tuner by Matrix SR1000, that's modern. It's the current one, the one I'm using. This repairman from Barksdale used to be able to take the back off of the Elmaya, and he was always super humble. I don't know anything about guitars, he would say. I said, you know more about electronics than most people will ever learn. You'll forget more in one day than they'll ever know. And he could just move things around a little bit. I get the guitar back, and it was as good as new or better. Not a lot of them get that compliment out of something as mean as me. Um, what else was I going to say? Suffice it to say that um, 
Yes. With this tuner, what you can do, you can use the semitones. You can strike these harmonics on these strings. With this tuner, with this quartz needle, you can actually get it to read intonation accurate with two strings hitting the same note. Or, for instance, this is E and this is D. If you hit these two harmonics side by side, and both of these strings are perfectly in tune, the needle on this thing will tell you that. It will ring in tune for both. And by doing this, you can get perfect harmonic synchronicity. It rings like a fucking church bell. The whole thing. And that kind of tuning on this guitar with a floating bridge is harder than hell. It's hard to get that. It takes me each day hours on occasion to get it. So depending on how much racket the neighbors are making, the weather, New Orleans is so humid. Uh, but on good days when it's cooler weather, once we got to October and weather started to cool off, I was able to get tones and settings out of the guitar, not unlike the November 22nd recording, which is really about as good as this guitar has ever sounded. I bumped the guitar yesterday accidentally. I am a fanatic about keeping the house as clean as I can. This is a massive old plantation built in 1826. It, the ceilings on this originally were 36 feet high before air conditioning. And uh, the ceilings have been lowered. There's a second ceiling on it for central air. So we now have ceilings that look like they're about 18 feet instead of 36. It holds the cool air in instead of having it rise up super high. Cleaning this house, cleaning this uh, side of the house, which I call an apartment, is work. Tuning this guitar alone is work with a capital W. I don't necessarily want things easy. I know I'm warped. I said it. I really am. I don't want things to be easy. I want them to make me work. 